For the first time in my life, I feel like I'm at home. Although I never knew, I never felt like I was not at home living in Europe. I never felt like I was out of place. I just feel like over here, I'm a little bit better in place. I'm a little bit more comfortable. I wanted to answer some questions. I wanted to go to the village of my mother, go to the village of my father. I've never even been to those places. So the first attempt was in November of 2021. I actually thought that would be it, I would stay. But within three months or so, I moved myself back to the UK. And that was really because my expectations were a little misaligned with the reality of it. It, it was a tough experience because I just had so many incorrect expectations of what this place was like. Even with the basic stuff, I bought really thick jumpers that I thought I might need during the night time. And I obviously didn't. My name's Kwajo. I do a few different things, primarily working in the tech space, but I do also run a hostel and build buildings here in Ghana. So that's me. So yes, I am Ghanaian. My mother, my father, born and raised in Ghana. That being said, I was raised in Europe. So I've always had this internal dialogue with myself. Who am I? Where is it I'm really from? Where is it I belong? And that's actually what I'm here for, to try and figure that out. Personally, I must say it's been a pretty good experience. I think the character who I am and because I moved around, I went to about 10 different schools growing up, I've always had to introduce myself. So I've learned through experience how to introduce myself, how to make friends, how to just carry myself and how to stay sharp. But that being said, you know, I've also been around and, and I've seen how other people have been treated. You see what goes on in the news and all those type of things there. And, and it just actually has led to more conflict within myself because it's tough, right? When you're having a great life, but certain people around you who come from the same place as you do aren't for the same reasons that, you know, we're all black, we're all Ghanaian. And it's, it's been a real journey. And, and I finally decided to see maybe what that other side is like, the African side, the Ghanaian side. And that's what I'm here for. I wanted to answer some questions. I wanted to go to the village of my mother, go to the village of my father. I've never even been to those places. So that in itself, like those two reasons was enough to come here. But I also felt like in going to those places and doing that type of discovery, I would learn a bit more about myself. And even if I take that Ghanaian self-discovery part aside, there is also, in my belief and in the belief of many others, a lot of opportunities here, both personally and business-wise. So when I put all those things together, it seemed like a no-brainer to come to Ghana. So the first attempt was in November of 2021. I actually thought that would be it, I would stay. But within three months or so, I moved myself back to the UK. And that was really because my expectations were a little misaligned with the reality of it. And that's normal, I guess, because I hadn't been here before. I hadn't really had conversations with people who had lived here before. Recently, although my parents are from here, they moved to Europe 30 years ago, 20 years ago. And Ghana, especially Accra, has changed so much, even in the last three years, so never mind 20 or 30 years ago. So when I did come here in 2021, it, it was a tough experience because I just had so many incorrect expectations of what this place was like. Even with the basic stuff, I brought really thick jumpers that I thought I might need during the night time. And I obviously didn't. So when I, <laughs> so when I um, went back to the UK, I left those jumpers at home, but I also left certain expectations at home. <laughs> okay, I mean, it's hard to really pinpoint the real expectations that I had and what wasn't what, what didn't get met with reality but it was more so just the little things it was the little challenges the way in which we greet people the way in which you cannot use your left hand the way in which you have to speak to elders the way in which people communicate with me as well because it's it's a two-way thing of adaptation it's also I suppose the local environment adapting to me coming from overseas people have certain expectations of me that I didn't know they would have. I think you and I spoke about it a little as well, that this place is sometimes about how you look and how you talk, not necessarily what you're saying. And 
those type of things I just needed to adapt to and I needed to recognize and accept. So you go back home and then you book a one-way ticket. Talk to us about that. <laughs> because I realized that it's now or never in a way because if I've just come and I've decided to take myself back, if I can't convince myself to go within a few months of coming back, when do I convince myself? I could always come here on a holiday and that's fun but to really come here and move I felt like it's really now or never and as well as the things that were happening in my life because it wasn't just this dilemma that I was dealing with life wasn't on pause I still had a full-time job I still was investing in certain businesses and I was getting to a place where it would be quite difficult to remove myself back to Ghana if I had made certain investments into certain opportunities in Europe. So it was now or never because I felt like I was actually putting my life slowly on pause, living between two different mindsets, living between two different cultures. So that's why I decided to do it and I couldn't be happier for it. For the first time in my life, I feel like I'm at home. Although I never knew, I never felt like I was not at home living in Europe, I never felt like I was out of place. I just feel like over here I'm a little bit better in place. I'm a little bit more comfortable. And, and there's just one example I want to give if, if that's okay. Living in Europe, sometimes things don't go, go your way. It's normal. You might propose something to someone. You might ask somebody a question and you might not get the answer that you're looking for. Naturally, in the back of your mind, you might think, is it? because of the color of my skin. Is that why it didn't go the But when I'm over here and things still don't go my way all the time, that one thought that, that I don't have is, is it because of the color of my skin? And, and that is liberating. It's so beautiful to feel like I actually have the ability to make change and I'm not stuck because of the way people's mindsets are based on the way I look or the color of my skin and, and and that's been I think for me so far within the two months I've been here the most liberating the best feeling that I've had just knowing that I'm not necessarily being judged on the one part of me I cannot change which is what I look like and who I am it, it's been really tough I mean it, it's been extremely tough I, I've been involved in property related things in the UK and systems are more developed and they're in place to allow let's say newcomers to have a better time of it but i feel like over here there are no blueprints even if people have done what you're trying to do that information isn't centralized anywhere it isn't documented there aren't standard operations of procedures and and you have to figure things out by trial and error and it takes a lot of time and sometimes it wastes a lot of money. You might build something and you realize you've got a breaker wall. You realize you've used the, the wrong type of uh, lining in your plumbing work. You've used the wrong type of cables because your electrician is residentially focused instead of commercially focused. And it goes on and on and on and on. So that's been a really tough challenge, realizing that, hey, I'm not gonna find the answers from anyone and I'm gonna find them out through experience and being more uh, present both physically and mentally whereas in the UK you might hire a contractor that takes care of things over here you hire a contractor but you still need to take care of things and certain things like that you need to adapt to but it is what it is so the hostel was it's a student hostel and it was built out of the fact that the Nkwami Krumah University in Kumasi is developing it's becoming more international it's becoming more recognized here in Africa and loads of students are wanting to come and study there and as they should however there aren't enough rooms to meet that demand and it's just a foolproof business model students come in they stay in the hostel for an academic year and they do their thing but naturally being a people's person i started speaking to some of these students i started asking them questions you know what is it you want to do once you graduate what's your journey like and a lot of them were telling me I don't know. A lot of them were telling me we don't really have many opportunities. We don't really have any places where we can really be ourselves and learn who we are. Because once you graduate, actually that's where life really begins, right? People sometimes think, oh, once you graduate, you have all the answers. But once you graduate, you really have all the questions. So I wanted to create a space where these people can come and experiment. Maybe you've got a tech degree and you want to start a little tech company or you really just want to build some code, right? 
you need a place to do this in. And that's where my second property that I'm building here in Tama, that's what that's all about. Giving an opportunity to people to, to, to come and just feel comfortable knowing that they don't have to pay bills, knowing that they don't have to meet certain obligations from the landlord. They can just come here and be themselves. And I think in those environments is where the best products come out of. And hopefully we can have tech guys that are producing amazing things. We can have, have artists that are creating beautiful songs, uh, hairstylists that are doing awesome things, tattoo artists, painters, all of this type of stuff and, and that's what that is about. So there's a real continuity in, in, in the journey over there. Why? Because it, I think it makes sense. I think that this is where people put their money in Europe. I think in America, in Canada, a lot of investors invest in the creative spaces because they recognize that out of these type of thinkers is where innovation happens. And I truly believe here in Ghana and generally in Africa, but specifically in Ghana, there are so many creative ways to do so many different things. And you see that just looking around. I think the quote is, uh, invention comes out of necessity. And I know that the type of people that will be in my spaces are people who have these inventive and creative minds, and they are gonna build so many beautiful things that ultimately will help develop this nation. And that's why I think I need to put some of my money into this sort of space. And because I enjoy it. I actually very recently posted on my Instagram, I think it was two days ago, I had a, a private tour of the Chapman residence. So Mr. Daniel Chapman, he was the first ever appointee in the United Nations. He was a part of liberating Ghana uh, into their independence and just being around the same plot of land where the actual forefathers of this country, you know, were making big decisions has been my highlight because I'm really interested in the political journey of Ghana. You know, we're a very new country, relatively speaking, and being, you know, in the same presence of these type of people has been such a highlight because it makes me realize that these people lived in homes, these people lived in houses, just like I do. And if they were able to do what they were able to do with the challenges of the time, then what is it I can't do? And, and, and that has been really eye-opening and really motivating and I love it. My favorite local dishes. Man, I eat everything. I'm, a, I'm quite an inquisitive person and if I see something that I like the look of or like the smell of, I sort of eat it. So the benku, the fufu, the wache, the jollof, the red red, I mean everything. You name it, I've probably tried it and I've probably enjoyed it. So. Which local words have you been able to pick up so far? Which local words? I mean, the main ones I probably cannot repeat on camera. <laughs> But I think I really love the way that Midasi and Pacho, please and thank you, is really sometimes overused over here. You might ask somebody their name and they'll say Kwejo, Pacho, you know. But politeness is, 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 is a part of the culture and, and that's something I recognized very early on. Mi Pacho, Mi Dasi, please and thank you. And I, and I like to be polite anyway, so I love to learn how to be polite in different languages. When we say Ghana, what three things come on top of your mind now that you've been here? What three things come to mind? I feel like the Ghanaian flag represents that to me quite a lot. You know, the green, the vegetation, the greenery, the natural resources, the yellow, obviously Ghana, formerly Gold Coast. We are so rich in natural resources. But then the black star, because ultimately that's what this country is. I don't think it is its natural resource or its physical beauty. I think it's the people, especially the youth, right? The youth here in Ghana is the largest population category and I think the youth, me included, were being underutilized and overutilized at the same time. So when I say that, we're being overutilized for our physical labor, but underutilized for our mental capacity. And, and when I think about that, and I think about one of those three things, it's, it, it's, it's the black star, it's, it's the Ghanaian heart, it's, it's the people. And, and that's, I think, one of the most standout parts about Ghana, it's the people. I don't have any intentions and that's purposeful because I think intentions lead to expectations and assumptions and sometimes they influence decisions. So I'm here for a year at the very least. And at the end of this year, I'm gonna look back on these type of conversations, me sweating in the sun. I'm gonna look back about the experiences I've had over the year, the ones that are gonna happen that I don't even know yet. 
and I'm just going to sit down and ponder and introspect, hey, how have these last 12 months been for myself, for my growth, for my development, and would I like to continue this journey? And at that point, I can let you know whether I intend to stay. But today, right now, I couldn't tell you. I'm just going with the flow and allowing this life of Ghana to take me where it takes me. Come look at this. I'm sweating too much. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Bring me so.